I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. You're listening to Stand Out, Get Noticed, the show that helps you communicate with confidence so you can stand out from the crowd and get noticed by all the right people. If you want to be a person of influence and achieve success in business and in life, this podcast is for you. To subscribe to the show, go to thecmethod.com. Hey there, Rockstar. Welcome to episode 64 of the Stand Out Get Noticed podcast. My name's Christina Cantors, and I'm really excited to have you joining me this week. So thank you very much for listening. Only one week and one day before I head to the US, I'm going to Chicago for the Podcast Movement Conference, at which I'm speaking, which I cannot wait for, and I'll be giving you updates on that while I'm over there as well. Hopefully, I'll be able to interview some amazing people, amazing podcasters while I'm over there, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, today I'm going to share with you some tips on how to communicate with very social, relationships-based people. This is the third part in the series on communicating with different personality types. In part one, episode 62, we gave you an overview of all the different personality styles. And in last week's episode, episode 63, I talked about how to work with very, very direct people, also known as the director, the eagle, or the red person if you're looking at a the, the colors personality test. Now, the personality type I'm talking about today is known as, and this is throughout different personality tests, known as the peacock, the socializer, the promoter, or if you're looking at colors, the yellow type personality. And essentially, this person loves being around people, loves having fun. They prioritize relationships and are often the people with the big ideas. And in this episode, I'll go into more detail as to how you can spot them, things you need to know about them, and how to communicate with them, whether you're presenting to them, asking them a question, or taking questions from them. But firstly, why is it important that you communicate well with the socializer? Well, firstly, like the director that I talked about last week, they are highly likely to be your boss. Most people in high-level positions like executive boards or CEOs are either directors or socializers, and the socializers generally have got there through their connections, their ability to talk to people and ability to, to build rapport with people and sell themselves. So that's why they've made it up to that top position. Now, maybe the socializer is the important investor that you're pitching to you know, the CEO of that of that company, or maybe they're a client that you want to win over. And finally, if you want to grow your business or move up in your company, they're the ones, this is important, they're the ones who can connect you with the right people to help you do that. As out of all the personality types, they are the best at networking. So they have awesome networks. They know all the right people. So it's a good idea to get to know them make friends with them because they'll often have connections that will be able to help you as well. Okay, so how do you spot a socializer? Well, firstly, you'll find them in roles to do with public relations or in entertainment as they love being the center of attention and performing. You might find them in MC or host positions or in sales and teaching. And many visionary entrepreneurs are socializers as well, Richard Branson being a key example of that, you know, a very big ideas kind of guy. You'll most likely find socializers talking to people, whether it's at work or out and about at events and barely at their desks. They'll be up running around chatting to people. Now, they're most likely running late for meetings, most likely because they've been held up talking to someone I don't know if you've ever been in a meeting and someone rocks in late and going, oh, I'm so sorry, I just I bumped into so-and-so and we were having a bit of a chat. You know, that's, that's a socializer type person. For socializers, work and life blends together, so they have no problem having colleagues who are friends and friends who are colleagues, as opposed to directors, or, you know, very, very direct people who keep work and personal life separate. They like to compartmentalize. Socializers make good eye contact when they're talking to you. They'll often be very expressive with their face and often quite smiley. 
They tend to walk with a bounce in their step, always aware of the people around them. You know, they're very people people and they're always checking out, you know, who should I say hi to? Should I, do I know them? Should I chat to them? Should I meet them? Socializers usually take pride in their appearance. They like to wear something that's a bit different or something that stands out in the hope that you'll compliment them because they do love a good compliment. Socializers focus on relationships rather than tasks, which makes them very different to the director. This means that at work, for them, it's more important that everyone's having a good time and getting on rather than everyone getting the task done. Socializers love making small talk, and especially they love talking about themselves. And finally, socializers' emails and text messages generally read the same way that they speak. So there'll be exclamation marks, smiley faces peppered throughout, extra words like, okay, great, see you then, can't wait, instead of a yes. I'm sure you've, if you're not a socializer, I'm sure you've received texts from people in this manner. Okay, important things you need to know about the socializer. Firstly, they have a very short attention span. They get bored easily if something presented to them isn't fun or exciting. Okay, they're big ideas people, they're enthusiastic, they want things that jump out at them and and grab them. And secondly, rapport always comes first before results. Have you ever been so focused on your task that you, you walk up to someone and you start talking about that task straight away? So you approach someone and say, hey, so I made some changes to that document. And have you had them reply with, well, good morning. It's nice to see you too, (laughs) right? If that's happened to you, chances are that person values rapport over the results. So if you want to communicate with a socializer, always start with some small talk. And it's pretty easy really, as they love talking about themselves. Just ask them questions about themselves. You know, what'd you get up to on the weekend? Who did you see? What, you know, tell us about the movie you watched. Oh yeah, awesome, right, really easy. How do you present to a socializer? Now, in last week's episode, I talked about how you need to be very direct when you start a presentation because you need to capture the attention of the directors, right? The direct people. Now, after that, you then need to move on to the socializers. Otherwise, they're going to get really bored too. And to get the socializers on board, you need to highlight how exciting your idea is. So as a general rule of thumb, get to the point from the very start. For example, say, our idea is XYZ and today we're presenting XYZ. And once you've got that out of the way and the direct people are happy, address the socializers. Say something like, we're really excited about this opportunity as we've never done X before. You know, this is a great opportunity for us to do blah, blah, blah. Make it exciting and say it with enthusiasm, okay? That's going to help get them on board. You need to avoid detail if you can. Socializers are not interested in processes or details. They just want the big idea. To them, it's like if they think the idea is good, they'll go, yep, let's go do it. And then the the details sort of work themselves out later or they give them to someone else to figure out, but it's not for them. Finally, in a presentation, be prepared for interruptions. If a socializer is keen on your idea, they're likely to jump in with a question. And this doesn't mean that they they mean to put you off. It's a good sign, rather, because it shows that they're keen to learn more. Right? The worst case scenario is if a socializer sits there really quietly and doesn't make eye contact. If they're bored or distracted, they're likely to start chatting to other people or playing with their phones. Now, if this happens, Don't be afraid to engage them, right? You need to ask them a question or do an activity or do something to pique their interest and get them engaged and enthusiastic again because you don't want them distracting the rest of the people in the audience. How to approach a socializer. All right, like I mentioned before, they love small talk and they love talking about themselves. So ask them questions about themselves and let them do their spiel before you start diving into the work-related talk. In terms of small talk, you can always start with a compliment. You know, genuine compliments go a long way and socializers really appreciate it. And when you approach them, make sure you mirror their energy. If you are approaching them with with a question or a new idea, deliver it with their level of enthusiasm and energy. Nothing drains a socializer more than someone with really low energy. So if you want them to get excited about it, you've got to get excited too. 
Next point is don't take too long to ask the question. Remember, they get bored easily. So don't give them all the details and then the question at the end. For example, if you say, hey, Dave, we've got the quarterly reports back and sales are up by 10%, but expenses are up by 15% and the accounts department has informed us they need extra support if they're able to get all the paperwork done by the end of the financial year. And we need to talk to you about what we can do to increase accountability within our team's socialize has fallen asleep, okay? Or they've, they're glancing over your shoulder and looking at the next shiny object. You'd be better off saying, hey, Dave, did you try that new coffee place down the road? No? Oh, it's amazing. And the staff are super friendly too. You got to check it out. Oh, by the way, we need to have an ideas session with accounts. And we know that if we want to make some exciting moves, you're the best person to talk to. Are you free tomorrow? They're more likely to go, hells yeah, sounds fun. Now, if you're asking a question of a socializer and you need a lot of information from them in order to do your work, you need to understand that because they're big ideas people, they're not strong at giving all those details a lot of the time. They generally just roll full steam ahead and deal with those things later. So if you do need details, it's best to not ask them if possible. Instead, ask who you need to talk to to get all the details from. Right? They might say, oh, go talk to Jim. He, he can fill you in on all of that. But if the socializer is the only person who knows all those details, make it very clear to them that you need the details to make this awesome idea a reality. Okay, Because they'll just assume that you'll be able to do it. So you really need to make sure, tell them how important it is that you need those. All right. How do you respond to questions asked by a socializer? Firstly, again, avoid going into details. You need to focus on what's in it for them and how it will affect them and the business or or whatever it is from an image and relationships perspective. Okay, remember that they're more focused on relationships and how they look and how their branding is and how much fun they're going to have rather than the pure metrics. Now, remember that everyone's a little bit different and there will be some socializers who are interested in the numbers and everything, but gauge that from them. Okay. If they ask for the numbers, that's fine. Go for it. If they ask for more detail, go for it. But if they haven't asked for it, start high level, you know, start big idea and then drill down from there if, if needed. Now, if you get asked a question that's a bit tricky, you can actually buy yourself some time by complimenting them and making them feel good about asking the question right? So if you're a bit unsure about the answer, just say, oh, that's a great question. I'm so glad you asked. And they'll feel all chuffed with themselves. And you've just bought yourself some thinking time. And finally, when you're responding to a question, I recommend that again, you show your energy. Remember, building rapport with socializers is very important to them and matching their enthusiasm and energy will help to create that connection with them. All right, so those are my tips for communicating and connecting with the socializers in your life. Now, your challenge this week is to identify who are the socializers that you encounter on a day-to-day basis. And I want you to observe them in their natural habitat, which is most likely in a social or a networking situation. And I want you to watch their energy levels, their facial expressions, their gestures, and watch how they talk. Notice if they use a lot of imagery or metaphors. And if you don't feel comfortable making small talk, instead of getting all frustrated when all they do is talk about their weekend, when you just want to talk about work, use this as an opportunity to practice your small talk skills. Make good eye contact, nod along, show enthusiasm, ask more questions. Like Ralph mentioned in episode 62, great communicators are people who can communicate and connect with all different types of people. And as difficult or annoying as it may seem, it's one of the best ways to take your relationships, your work, and your business to the next level. Think about it like you're speaking different languages in different countries, but to connect with them, you don't need to cross over into their country completely. You just got to come to the border. So that's your challenge this week. You don't need to turn into a socializer, but just come to the border and just and meet them there and you'll be able to connect much better with them. So that's your challenge this week. Alrighty, and that brings us to the end of episode 64. Thank you so much for tuning in today. 
I'm so grateful that you've chosen to take some time out of your day to spend with me. Your support means a lot. Hey, if you haven't yet, I'd really appreciate if you could leave an iTunes review or a Stitcher review. That would be super, super helpful for the podcast to get it out there and and get one well, for it to stand out and get noticed by even more people. So all you have to do is go to iTunes if you use an iPhone and search for stand out, get noticed there and hit leave a review. Or you can go to thecmethod.com slash Stitcher and from there it'll take you to Stitcher and you'll be able to leave a review there. You don't need to be a Stitcher user. Anyone can leave a review. I would really, really appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Alrighty, well, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your week and I will see you next week. And in next week's episode, I'll be covering the final two personality quadrants. So make sure you tune into that. Keep on being awesome. My name's Christina Cantors, and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. Seeing as we're talking big ideas this week, I thought I'd play you Come Fly With Me by Sinatra, because I think flying away sounds like a great big idea. (laughs)